Davis. But first up, she is the former editor and an owner of the Hollywood Reporter Billboard Media Group. Please welcome Janice Min. <laughs> hey, Janice. Great pleasure to see you. Nice How are you? I'm well. Okay, so right. uh, you're a bit of a newsmaker yourself because, okay. you know, the Hollywood Reporter, right, yes. was the were the ones who were on this story with Harvey Weinstein before anybody else, and it was hard to... It's hard to land that whale on the shore, wasn't it? It, <laughs> it, it, was, uh, it was really hard. And I have to tell you, Harvey Weinstein has loomed over me for seven years, the whole time I have done The Hollywood Reporter. And uh, one of the- Literally loomed over you? <laughs> or, mean, because he's loomed over a lot many, of Many, many yeah. women, yes. Um, he, you know, one of the first conversations I ever had, I had hired a reporter named Kim Masters, who was the first person I ever sure. hired. And the first conversation we had, she told me about a conversation she had had with Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. And it was off the record, but I'll tell you what she asked him. And she said, Harvey, well, he said, he said to her, you know, what do you want to know? And she said, I heard you rape women. What do you have to say about that? And so there are two publicists in the room with them who are sort of like uh, humana humana. And, um, and so from that point on, because I knew what his answer was, that we really put an effort, put a lot of effort towards trying to. What was his answer? I can't say. It was an off the record conversation, but it didn't. Oh, put, you took it us did, down I, that Yes, road. I know. Oh, I know. Oh, but. Oh, what a. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't impugn him, oh, obviously. Boy. Um, okay. But, it, uh, well, but it, it, it definitely didn't, didn't make me doubt right. all the no, smoke I'm, that I'm, was in the air. But for... it, it is funny that in this age where nothing, nothing we can agree on, the one thing that is bipartisan is treating women like this, right? Is I mean, treating women like yes, yeah. I mean that liberals do it. Conservative. I mean the liberals it, get caught. The conservatives get yes. caught. Do you see? Is there any pattern you see differently with like between liberals and conservatives on this or how their communities react to it? <laughs> I mean, I think the only pattern we see is that is, is how prevalent it is and how there are walls of secrecy around around these cases of abuse everywhere, whether it's Penn State, whether it's the Catholic Church, right. uh, whether it's, you know, the White House politics, um, that these things have, there's always a, uh, there are always people covering up for them or, or enabling. Yes, and I've heard, you know, I've heard the conservatives say, you know, it took a village to help, you know, Harvey once, but it also took a village to elect the other sex predator. Well, that, I mean, you know, completely. And, a, a much bigger village, right. you know. I mean, I, I, I sort of have this feeling, I had, I had lunch today with two, two prominent women in Hollywood who said uh, that, that it's actually been a welcome relief to talk about Harvey Weinstein this week instead of Donald Trump for once. But right. I, you know, I have this theory that I think it's all just sublimated anger towards Donald Trump, this whole feeding frenzy. If you, you know, it's a, the one year anniversary of the Access Hollywood tapes and right. you know, he gets elected and this guy, there is some possible tangible crime and punishment that will happen now. What, what do you think conservatives have also said this week that um, you know, those of us who laughed at Mike Pence for following the Billy Graham rule, yes. if you're not familiar with the Billy Graham, probably many of you are practicing it right now. <laughs> it's, uh, if you're married, you never have like a meal right. or a drink with a single woman. Right. And I think when you go to any place where it serves alcohol, you bring, you bring your wife because right. the chicks could get out of control and Completely. attack <laughs> yes. Mike Pence, you right. know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But they say, uh, well, if that, if, you know, if, if, if the liberals had practiced that, then, then Harvey, you know, the woman wouldn't be in this situation with Harvey Weinstein. Does yeah, that, make that any sense? doesn't quite make sense. Let's remember, this is a man who calls his wife mommy or mother or whatever's going on there. He doesn't have, like, Pence. He, Pence, right. Pence. Yeah, yes. no, Harvey, I don't think he did that. But the, um, the. Uh... <laughs> One for Harvey. <laughs> okay, we got it. But, <laughs> but, I mean, it's sort of, I mean, the, Harvey Weinstein is just emblematic of this whole larger issue that yeah. we we have not been able to solve, and and hopefully this makes that conversation happen more of um, women not being treated equally, not being in positions of power. And I think this whole thing has made me feel in the last week. I knew this was going on in Hollywood, but not to this extent. And you feel like you know if you're on your right. iPhone or your phone, like every 30 it minutes a news alert comes out about someone else that was. It, it a reminds me a little. I remember in the 90s my. Dear old friend, still my friend, Roseanne. Yes. Talked about 
child molestation. Right. And I don't think it, and I, but I remember everybody being like, oh, she's exaggerating. Right. Of course we know it exists, but it's not widespread like she's saying. It turned out she was right. Right. And we found it, it is kind of really widespread. It's or really way widespread. more than we but thought. But it's, it's so mind boggling. And I, you know, I remember when I first learned about campus rape, for example, and I, I remember thinking, oh, that, it could never be that pervasive. Who wants to have sex with a comatose woman? Like that's, it, that, I, like how weird do you have to be? Like there are not enough It must people. be more about power. Absolutely. I, because I think like, isn't it easier to, they should teach a course right. in health class in school, like mm -hmm. how to be attractive to a woman. Right. Even Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> who is ugly. <laughs> One might say. Flat right? out ugly. Mm -hmm. Ugly men can be, a, Humphrey Bogart was not good looking. Correct. You can, Harvey Weinstein could have lost 135,000 pounds. <laughs> Like, just look, groomed, mm -hmm. dress fly, mm -hmm. be considerate. Right. Like, actually be interested. There is a way, Harvey, you actually could have gotten a woman to go to bed with you willingly. Right. I don't understand why that wouldn't have been so much well, more satisfying. Okay. But I... O'Reilly, you know, it's always about this, you know, it's 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 more power, don't you think? I, I, it is 100% about power, but you know Harvey is not. He was not just a sexual offender. He was also physically assaulting men, and he was known for you know he punched his brother in the nose, broke his nose. Oh. He was known in meetings to throw things at people. And if you ever meet people yeah. who worked at the Weinstein Company or Miramax Harvey's companies, there is a palpable PTSD around them, where <laughs> you know they. <laughs> I mean, and like, and, but you know, you, I would sometimes yeah. make this joke with them. Oh, are you in a Harvey? survivors group and it's not funny you know and right. they they are really stricken but the amazing thing about about the secrecy that goes around sexual assault you, they would tell you funny stories funny stories about you know his temper and freakouts and bad behavior but no one no one in seven years would ever go on the record and say he sexually assaulted right. someone uh, and and think you know what I kept thinking is if it's just like this in Hollywood with rich famous people right when do we get to the poor pe poor women in the country? That's, you know, I think about some... Absolutely. Because, you know, you're we're working at the Tyson food plant chopping heads off well, chickens on a conveyor belt all day for $10 an hour, and the shift boss, you know, is well, like hinting he wants a yes. blood job or I could hire somebody right. else. What does that poor woman well, do? Well, okay, I mean, I think, you know, this also made me think this week about... I mean, we, this is a country that since 1923 has been unable to pass an equal rights amendment. That we are, right. that we, you know, we believe, we say, and you grow up thinking that women are treated equally, and then, uh, but no one is able to legislate that because people, I think, too many people at heart don't want it, are not comfortable with it. And it's a basic, just we're basically fundamentally saying women should be paid the same, should have equal rights, and we can't even as a country agree on that. Uh, so when you, you see how that trickles down to, uh, oh. Workplace harassment, the ability to have recourse, the ability to go to an HR department and not have, not think that that HR department's not going straight to Roger Ailes and asking Roger Ailes how to fix it. And you've seen that you saw that happen at the Weinstein Company. You know, you feel, I think if you're a victim of sexual harassment or assault, you feel trapped. We're also losing our ability to talk about things. Right. I mean, SNL didn't do Harvey Weinstein jokes mm -hmm. and got shit about it. Right. And then James Corden did some, right. and he got shit about it. Yes. So which is it? And aren't publicists telling their clients, like, just don't oh, talk about terrifying. it? Oh, terrifying. It's a terrible well, state for America to be in about any issue, just completely. in general. Like, we are just too afraid to talk about this. Right. It's crazy. Right. I, right. You know. Well, I mean, I feel like we're a little bit in, like, Robespierre French Revolution times here. Right. I say it every week, yes. the purity police. Well, yes. the... And, and I'll give you two examples this week that I thought were really unfortunate. One of them was Ben Affleck, who released a really nice statement about, um, about supporting the women. And, and there was... An, an unfortunate, very inappropriate incident he did 12 years ago, I believe it was, on, on MTV's TRL where he yeah. grabbed a woman's breast. I think under no circumstances anyone thinks that was a good thing, but it has, do you think Ben Affleck will ever talk about this topic again? Never in a million years, I'm assuming. And then another incident, uh, Molly Ringwald, the actress who a lot of us grew up with, she wrote a piece mm -hmm. in The New Yorker about uh, 
why she left Hollywood, moved to Paris, and a lot of it involved sexual assault and harassment, mm. you know, including when she was the age of 13, some crew member asking her to dance, and he had an erection. I mean, it was just, you know, really creepy stuff. But in that story, it referenced an incident uh, when she quit Hollywood. It's a pickup quote of a pickup quote, like a movie line, a publication that doesn't even exist that picked up a quote that Esquire thought was real. It may have not have even been real from Jeffrey Katzenberg, who I'm sure you know, a big executive here in town, mm -hmm. one of the legends here. And he was attributed with saying this quote at the time when Molly Ringwald left, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know who she was if she sat on my face. Okay, so, uh, so Jeffrey Katzenberg, who <laughs> does not, I have never known, <laughs> I have never known to speak like that ever. Right. Is suddenly in this position yes, that, of, of having. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he said. I, that. Right? I can't even yeah. imagine. He's so, not that funny. No. <laughs> No, he just, uh, yeah, that's so yes, not him. It's so yes, not him. And right. so he is in this position of suddenly right. issuing an apology for it's something he doesn't. my manager. For something he doesn't even, he's not even sure he said, but this, you know, he had stuck his neck out earlier. He right. released the email. He wrote to Harvey Weinstein after Harvey Weinstein asked him after the New York Times story well. came out looking for support. And all of a sudden, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey is like in this position of, oh my God, do right. I we, continue talking about this topic? Liberals have to stop losing like their shit. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. Know who the enemy is yes. and embrace each other. Exactly. Thank you so much Thank for agreeing you. with me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it. Great job there. Thank okay. Thank you, Janice.